I introduce my, my panel this morning, I just wanted to talk about a few things that we've been coming up as we've uh, been through the conference so far. We're obviously facing a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, or certainly let, let's hope so. Um, and coupled with that, we've got increasing rising inflation, we've got huge economic and geopolitical uncertainty, and we have, of course, the Russian and Ukraine conflict at the moment, which is causing a lot of, of, of I know, uh, challenges for my, my colleagues at the moment. Alongside that, we are absolutely competing in the race uh, for talent and seeking to win. And I don't think that's ever been more challenging than it is today, with so many hurdles that we all have to jump. We heard this morning in the opening uh, from Graham when he talked about the fact that our colleagues today actually have got huge choices in the work that they do and who they want to work for. And also at the ministerial round table, they were talking about the fact that we have a shortage of qualified officers. And we need to actually convince young people to join what's not necessarily an easy job. I loved hearing about the disco and perhaps we're not quite ready to party just yet, but I think we definitely need initiatives like that uh, to help us at the moment. So I'm delighted to welcome this morning uh, Captain Stilianos Demilius, welcome, uh, uh, Captain Harry, uh, sorry, uh, Fauzi Fraudi, uh, Captain Panagiotis Drossos, and Mr. Konstantinos Gal uh, Galanakis, and Mr. Harry Papamiditriou to welcome us and join us this morning on this conversation. So I'm going to ask each of the panel a number of different things, and I'm, I'm always conscious when we're talking about some of the challenges in seeking operational excellence, that we talk a lot about literally the challenges we're facing. So my challenge for the panel this morning is about what are some of the solutions that our businesses are actually doing and working on at the moment that perhaps can give others some ideas about how we compete in this race for talent. So, Constantinus, I'm going to come to you first of all, and I wondered if you could perhaps give us some insights to how the global events have shifted the recruitment market for seafarers. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, today, first of all, we live uh, a historical, uh, uh, historical times because uh, we have also the war. We had the COVID previously. Uh, so, the logistics concerning uh, COVID, we passed, we did uh, all the plans needed. Uh, but now with the war, there are so many unpredicted uh, factors in order to uh, cope with the changes, which are extremely fast. Uh, today we face humanitarian crisis concerning the crew. Uh, the, the racism on board the ships is profound lately because of uh, Ukraine and Russian crew. There are many cases as such. Uh, also, uh, the companies need to have a response strategy plan nowadays, like uh, other companies in other sectors outside shipping too. Uh, and the logistic uh, chain generally uh, has uh, been complicated because various seafarers, not only Ukrainians, but ex-Soviet country seafarers, are afraid of uh, an escalation of the war and they are shifting to other European countries and non-European, of course. US or whatever. So as you may understand, to follow up their logistics uh, in order to go with the safety that uh, the previous panel was talking about and the quality, it's been complicated because some countries, they don't have the establishment of training centers, of uh, uh, other logistics that are needed for uh, selecting screening uh, uh, the CIFAR. And uh, for the CIFAR, it's done more remotely. Uh, this is what I can face today, and uh, that we face today, and we see potential operation disruption coming uh, on the ship's uh, operations. So we have to be very proactive and then reactive, because shipping generally is a reactive uh, industry, not proactive. Uh, so as you may understand, all these uh, problems escalate, and now with uh, the war uh, and especially Russia, as uh, the latest news uh, say, that uh, they closed the borders. So, as you may understand, CFRs that they were scheduled to leave the country cannot leave the country. And also, CFRs that are on board want to go off board, not back to Russia, but they want to leave the vessels. And uh, many Ukrainians uh, prefer the European life, and they, start, uh, they stop the seamanship. We have seen such cases. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, and Harry, sort of, what sort of experiences are you having at the moment? 
Well, at this point, um, as Casadino said, the biggest problem is what's happening with the war. Uh, it's really uh, closing our uh, our way of to seek new seafarers where from, where to seek them from. Um, even today, I just had a case that a whole uh, a crew was stopped uh, because they weren't given a U.S. visa. So. At this point, we can't do much rather than sit back and relax and wait to see what's going to happen. Uh, we are, all of us in here, I suppose we're doing our best to seek other sources, but if you sit down and think, as per Binko's latest uh, report, 47,000 uh, are Ukraine officers and 71,000 are U uh, Russian officers, so this market is gone. And, and indeed, that seems to be a, a, a constant challenge uh, for everybody at the moment. Um, Stylianos, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about what you're currently doing to attract and retain and crucially respond to the changing requirements of seafarers that really adds to their employment experience. Thank you, Sharon. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, what I would like to say that uh, to succeed in these topics, you have to build an organization uh, that provides safety, mental safety, uh, physical safety, and psychological safety for its people. We want all of our people to speak up and uh, tell their opinion about everything and involve them in decision making. So what we're trying to do is uh, to provide all this to be uh, open to everyday challenge of the status quo and um, try to reward and recognize our people, give a lot of um, space for uh, learning and development with uh, personal development plans for uh, everybody and uh, try to understand what motivates people because this is a, um, uh, this space of um, of change, especially motivation, is uh, quite fast, especially for the new generations. And uh, so we have to equalize extrinsic and intrinsic uh, motivation, motivators, in order to attract and retain new generations that are coming, and most probably in the next five, ten years, it will be cover the most uh, of our workforce. And the same applies also for the onshore people. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, this is the biggest challenge um, in terms of um, uh, people uh, management, let's say, especially now that uh, we have uh, so, so many um, wicked challenges and problems uh, around the world. Uh, like geopolitical tensions and uh, energy crisis, climate crisis, potential recessions. Uh, so we have to work hard and reshape our strategies for the future in order to, 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 to have uh, people to staff our vessels. And not, not only qualified people, but competent people. Thank, thanks very much for st uh, staring that with us, Stylianos. Um, can I come, Fazi, now to you? Um, and perhaps working for a ship management company, have you seen challenges, in particularly in recruitment and selection? And how important in that is corporate culture? Yeah, uh, thanks, Sharon. First of all, thank you also to Captain Link and uh, to all uh, attendees. Uh, it is every for me every challenge is actually an opportunity to to explore something new and and to learn. Uh, from past mistakes, perhaps, or wrong strategies which were done in, in our industry. Uh, I think we, we have learned through COVID and through the war in Ukraine uh, that diversity and diversifying our solutions is actually a fantastic thing. It's a fantastic solution. And uh, I think we have, we have, uh, we came to so many um, ideas and so many solutions these days which we are extremely proud and happy that we had to come to this. Uh, recruitment itself is always challenging in any industry, not only in our industry. So to find the right candidates, to have the right 
corporate policy in, in recruiting the high standard uh, and qualified people, it's always, always a challenge. But having in place a very robust and solid uh, structures, and I'm talking about local recruitment setups, having in place a very clear uh, and harmonized policy, whether you're recruiting from India, from Ukraine, from Vietnam, or from Panama, the, the corporate structure should be functional, and, and the same uh, approach should be uh, harmonized for all uh, our, our seafarers. Uh, so, frankly speaking, I'm trying to, be, to think about this situation today a bit differently, and I see a lot of positive things, I see a lot of positive developments, despite the challenges. I, I, I feel that we, this situation has given us the chance to explore other nationalities and other sources of recruitment, which are amazing, doing amazingly well on board ships. That's really great. Thank, thank you so much. Um, Pangeotis, uh, can I come to you and, and perhaps you could expand about, on that a little bit for what's happening in your organization? Definitely. Thank you. Uh, corporate uh, structure is the fundamental of the effective and efficient operation of an organization having the technical management uh, function. For us, the human element is of particular importance. You need to give the adequate attention from the top, uh, receive the feedback uh, from your seafarers, from your human uh, element, and understand them, and give the appropriate answers. Now retention, definitely all of us are facing the problem of retention. We're taking into consideration the latest circumstances. All of us, the retention has been affected. However, you need to be proactive, not reactive, as Constantinos has said before. Yes, I agree, in some occasions, the shipping industry is a reactive uh, industry. However, this needs to be changed. You need to be proactive, set mitigation measures, uh, set targets for the human element, and accomplish them. So you need to continue to review your uh, performance, adjust your strategy in order to be able to have effective and efficient technical management uh, and have your clients satisfied with your performance. Thank you very much, really useful insights. Stilianos, can I come back to you again now? Um, as a tanker business, how do the skill sets requirements of your business differ from others? And have you seen a shift in what's been your responsibility to try and secure those capabilities? Thank you very much indeed for the question, Sean. Uh, well, I believe that uh, it doesn't differ. <laughs> I mean. I, I read the World Economic Forum um, study for the new skills uh, for the next 10 years. And uh, it, it, these are the skills that we need also in, uh, in shipping. I mean, um, we have invested a lot in leadership and soft skills since many years ago, except the technical know-how skills. But now we need um, uh, skills like analytical thinking, critical thinking, uh, complex problem solving. Uh, the IT development is uh, moving so fast and we have to catch up and uh, we have to, to train our people so they, can, uh, they will be able to use the technology but also they will be able to, to assess the information taken from the technology so they will improve their situational awareness which is a very, very important thing uh, especially uh, in high-tech uh, vessels that we have now, but uh, they are coming also. So um, it's not different, it's uh, difficult, and uh, we have a long way to go, I think. Thank you very much. Um, Constantinos, can I come back to you now? I was interested when you were talking earlier about Obviously, you're very much affected by the geopolitical environment that we're facing at the moment. And I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about, in this really challenging labour market, how are you making sure, what, what sort of different strategies are you adopting to try to compete? First of all, in order uh, the people to understand, uh, we have to see the macro environment of, 
what affects uh, the human resources. And uh, apart, apart from the geopolitical tensions, uh, the results and the side effects are that many uh, ship managers that used to have uh, Eastern European seafarers, without having to name again the countries, uh, they shifted to Philippines and India. So they, what happened was uh, they pushed a lot the uh, wage uh, demands of uh, the seafarers, especially Filipinos and India. And uh, within the last six months, you see an increase of more than 20% on the wages. So uh, this brings a budget problem to the ship owners, which are our clients, because we are the equalizers between seafarers and uh, ship managers and ship owners. So we have to bring the equilibrium. And uh, in order to do that, we have, first of all, to uh, teach from the one side uh, our ship managers how the reality and the market is right now uh, without uh, having to make it uh, beautiful. And uh, on the other side, to see what are the demands from uh, the CFR sites. So the demands from the CFR sites due to all these geopolitical tensions and all uh, this stress on board, because I come back to safety and quality. Which safety says I won't save CFRs? The quality makes a lot of control documents and populate the work on board of the CFRs and make them a hassle and not safe. Uh, and uh, give burden to the seafarer on, uh, on board uh, the ship. Uh, so those have to be, let me say, eliminated. And uh, uh, the seafarers are looking at ethics and they want a career path. If they will not see a career path with uh, a ship manager and uh, they will not see also uh, a seafarer-centric approach from and the crew manager and the ship managers, uh, then uh, you cannot uh, uh, bring uh, a good uh, um, effect, let me say, to the recruitment uh, operation. So uh, it's more complicated than it used to be in the past, the recruitment, the sourcing, etc. However, our digitalization, uh, which is in-house, uh, has uh, assisted us to digitalize all the procedures and the response uh, plans that we have in mind as a company, and uh, this is how we achieve to uh, find, source uh, many seafarers uh, from their homelands or wherever they are, or if they shifted to Europe, for example, for some Ukrainians. And uh, uh, the thing is that we communicate uh, and market our ship managers that they have future with them, and uh, they can uh, have. Uh, a career not only secured, but also a promising career with documented evidence. Uh, retention is, uh, as uh, Captain uh, Drosso said, uh, an important element. And uh, due to these um, geopolitical tensions, unfortunately some companies that they were, were heavily uh, having a Ukrainian or Russian crew, uh, they cannot have these retentions back. And they have to use new nationalities or whatever. So, uh, in order to be, uh, how to say, professional in uh, your business, you have to see the reality as it is. And also try to forecast uh, what are the trends. Uh, however, the trends are not that good, as we know and as we see. Uh, I hope uh, for the best uh, of uh, the shipping industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just changing tack a little bit now because obviously um, recruiting uh, colleagues, new colleagues into the businesses is really critical, but obviously retention is, is, is the other part of that. So um, I'm going to come to you first, uh, Harry, and then uh, Fauzi, if I may. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about, in response to that scarcity of talent in our industry sectors and the difficulty of, of bringing new talent in? Recognising the fact that we're also dealing with new technologies and having to upskill and, and, and reskill colleagues at the moment, what approaches are you taking to talent management and succession in your organisation so that you can actually help to retain the workforce you've got? Yes, uh, very good question. Um, I'd say the answer would be multiple, but we don't have much time. So, what we um, actually do is we try to uh, find the succession within our seafarers. Um, from our seafarers, we, every often, we bring them ashore, they stay in the office, they see the new technology that we are about to implement or is implemented, and um, 
like that, then they go back on board. And we have this on a six month ratio. And like this, uh, we have managed a lot of our positions to be filled by ex seafarers and uh, talented ones who at the end were better in the office than they would be the seafarers on board. So we do go often on the vessels. We do share uh, our plan of people coming in and feeling free to apply for a job within the office. And because it's uh, Aldendorf is a multinational company, um, we have a uh, multinationals running the company right now as we speak, and they are mostly their ex seafarers. That's really good to hear those success stories. Thank you. And Fazi, how about you? Yeah, uh, I will. I will try to mention what we do for the seafarers who are on board, not not necessarily those who are coming to the office. I think any big organization in, in our size, or bigger, or, or even smaller organizations, should demonstrate a lot of social responsibility towards their seafarers. So, just to give an example, when when the war started in Ukraine. Uh, our organization was very quick to, to provide solution to the refugees, you know, to, to help in, in, in the families, to give education, to give chance to cadets who are younger than 18 years old to go on board our ships. So a lot of social uh, contribution, which at the end pays off because it shows the, that the company cares. And by showing a lot of care, this is a very important thing to retain people and, and, um, and uh, work on the talent development. Also, I think by offering a lot of uh, soft solutions like um, you know, telemedicine, mental health support, um, any other uh, personal uh, care items, I, I think the, these, are, these are solutions which are extremely important. Now, working on the talent development, uh, I think we, we should always try to think as shipping industry a bit out of the box, to look at what other industries are doing, to explore technologies which are not commonly used. Uh, re recently we had the hologram solution, for example, which, which made a lot of impact and uh, definitely is not going to be a huge use on, on uh, thousands of people, but it made a lot of impact for those who have seen it and have experienced it. Uh, offering digital platforms, uh, giving to the seafarers um, thousands and uh, of courses which they can do online or wherever they are. So going out of the uh, usual solutions, the classic solutions, and looking out of the box, offering new technologies, offering a lot of care, show, showing high social responsibility, I think these are all very important contributing factors. Really good insight. Thank you, Fazi. Really helpful. Um, you talked just then about um, the importance of, of safety and well-being, and we've obviously heard more from uh, the previous panel this morning on that. So, Stilianos, can I come back to you now? Um, Lloyd's Register, uh, as, where I'm Chief People Officer, is very much about our, our core purpose is about working, working together for a safer and more sustainable world. And the correlation, as was pointed out this morning, between well-being and safety is, is really well known. Can you tell us a bit more about, give us some insights to what your organisation has been doing to support your people at this time? You said about well-being? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I, I have to say in the beginning that uh, well-being was uh, always there. <laughs> I mean, I remember I started my career back in 2000, uh, 1988. Uh, I wish it was 2000. But, uh, but uh, if someone told me at that time the world will be in, I, I wouldn't know. So yes, will be in is uh, directly and uh, indirectly um, linked with safety, uh, well-being and welfare of the seafarer on board and post service, uh, and um, uh, creates a lot of stress, creates a lot of anxiety, especially where you are on board especially where you are stranded for one year on board, uh, or more, <laughs> sometimes we saw that during the last few years. Um, and this creates uh, fatigue, mental and physical, so it directly uh, links uh, to incident and accident uh, potential, uh, either due to uh, fatigue, either due to uh, bad decision making or anything else. So we have to work uh, a lot on that. 
um, in uh, to, to speak for us. Um, we have been uh, since 2012. 2012 we have been um, initiated a total crew welfare and well-being campaign that it is um, uh, actually created by our seafarers and people are sure. Um, we run uh, regular and a lot of surveys during uh, over the years, and um, uh, we try to satisfy their needs. So we have. Um, I don't want to uh, uh, let's say uh, not give numbers to what we do, but uh, uh, we have a lot of work to do more, especially this uh, challenging future and. Uh, within uncertainty. And um, what we did also is to work with um, some prestigious external partners that they're quite expert in, um, in the field, like investors in People International, uh, and uh, work on specific frameworks for well-being uh, and welfare on recognition and reward um, awards, something like that. So we are preparing uh, for the future about that. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Panagiotis, can I come back to you now? Um, just almost thinking about preparing for the future, so that we're onto the road ahead now. What sort of changes do you see in the um, how we're going to, in shipping, stay in that race for talent? And what specific seafarer centric strategies are you going to employ? Thank you. Um, you need to pass the seafarers that they are part of the team, they need security. So it's not only um, the salary level that uh, seafarers are looking for, but in our days, security and business continuity is a question mark for them, but for the future. Um, from our side, we believe that having a concrete system and having the absolute senior management being aware of the situation, of the needs of the workforce, is one of the recipes. Increasing the engagement of head office towards the mining agents, we have the pleasure to control our, ma our own mining agents, so uh, the culture of ours is extended to our mining agencies. And um, take more um, serious what our seafarers bring back to the head office for the changes required, to, so give them a voice. We have increased the forums from our side, from uh, annual forums that we used to do prior to these circumstances to quarterly forums. Uh, we have developed the rating forums because uh, we gave uh, the attention to the officers which we should. However, the ratings are there, so we need to pass to them the strategy, the uh, what the, the organization, the targets, and the expansion, and th make them feel part of the team rather than head office team and vessels team. So it's a huge challenge for all of us. But as I have said, uh, for us, one of the main recipes is proactiveness. Define your targets, define your needs far before the needs will come. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, Constantinus, I know your organization's done a lot of research into employee um, attraction, well-being, development. Is, are there any key things that you could share with us today? Any insights you've gleaned? Yes, uh, uh, in the last four to five years, we took uh, the decision to uh, focus a lot on, uh, 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 how to say, uh, improvement of the skills of seafarers and also go for cadetship programs uh, for some specific uh, ranks for deck engine, but also electrician, uh, cadets, assistants, call them as you like, uh, that they give economies of scale to the ship because while you promote them to uh, pure electricians, you can pay less than you pay the market price today. So this, uh, uh, we believe that uh, by showing to the seafarers, not only through news and uh, media, but uh, uh, from mouth to mouth, that uh, your company is persuading your customers, uh, ship managers, I mean, and ship owners, to do this promotion uh, scheduling and uh, career path development. This, uh, I can say, assists us a lot 
to create our own pool, and I propose to every ship manager and ship owner to start developing their own talents instead of us competing among ourselves, because uh, this has uh, saturated the market lately, as I said uh, previously, in Philippines. The wages have uh, skyscraped, and uh, this is uh, a bad effect on uh, their budget and their operating expense of uh, the ship, because not only the, the wages increased, but also the, uh, the whole chain of logistics to embark and disembark the crew increased due to the energy crisis, also due to everything. So uh, you must have a plan and stick to the plan, proactive scheduling, proactive uh, scheduling not only for recruitments but for promotions also, and uh, link this to the training based on the appraisal results. The appraisals, uh, you know, usually the most companies have them as a, a control document. It's not a control document, it's a tool that you can identify the weaknesses and the opportunities you have based on each CFRM. So you can improve him or not. If not, okay, you find another one. But if you can improve him, this has to be linked to the chain of uh, scheduling, promotion, etc., etc. So these have worked, and uh, this uh, uh, technology has assisted us a lot because uh, the information in uh, the crew process, uh, all the panel can uh, state that and agree, is uh, uh, a lot of bureaucracy in between. So I believe uh, strategy, technology, ethics, and uh, CFR-centric approach, as I said me, uh, previously, uh, are the keys uh, for this uh, Turbulous times. Thank you very much. That's really, really good insight. And I, I think you'd very kindly offered to share some of your insights if anybody wanted to, to catch up with you over lunch. That, that would be fabulous. Um, uh, just, Silly, I was just coming back to you about um, in the sort of roast, uh, the road ahead. And, and I think you were talking also about seafarer centric strategies in your organisation. What sorts of things are you adopting at the moment? Oh, so, sorry, just just looking back about in terms of, of, of uh, seafarer centric strategies, I think you talked before about some of the things that you're doing to try and uh, ensure that uh, seafarers have great careers. So, um, so you, sorry, I, I didn't understand, so I, I would like to, <laughs> to repeat it. Yes, that's okay. Just thinking about um, in, in our race for talent that we're all in, um, anything else that you as an organization are doing really to make sure that you put the colleague at the heart of the experience? Ah, uh, okay. okay. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, well, yes, as, a, as an organization, I think that um, especially the last years, we, we learn uh, to unlearn <laughs> and relearn, let's say. So that we try to cascade also to our seafarers. Um, we try to embrace change, which is a day-to-day -day business, and uh, we try to 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 motivate them uh, to innovate, to train them to create, and um, uh, to do that we also associated with uh, some universities that helped a lot especially on the human element side and the soft skills side. Um, I think that um, the, 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 there is a lot to come, especially with technology uh, uh, development, and um, we have to be proactive and catch up with it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm conscious that um, we'll probably need to, to draw to a close. And I think, you know, thank you to my esteemed panel for sharing all of the insights about what they're doing in their organisations. And a few things that I, I took away really from that conversation this morning is about we need to live now in the new normal. Um, you know, we are in a post sort of pandemic world or certainly uh, hoping so that we are. And we need to think about how we as our, our own organisations can compete in that race for talent that we find ourselves in. We are very clearly in a really tough geopolitical and economic um, circumstances and we need to think about how we adapt and adopt new technologies, give our colleagues new skills, new experience, so that we're not just thinking about how do we keep attracting colleagues, new colleagues to the business, but also how do we retain those that we've already got. 
and therefore very much dwelling on the conversation that we've heard this morning is about how do we make sure that safety and well-being is at the heart of what we do and make sure that we actually provide clear progression and development opportunities to our colleagues and make sure that safety and well-being is very much at the heart of what we do. So thank you hugely to my panel this morning and uh, thank you for this topic today. Thank you.